Welcome, everyone. Today we have some wonderful announcements to share with you. We have all been invited to a party, and it's a special anniversary party for Kathy and Dave Watson. It's their 50th, and it's next Saturday. And Kathy would like, if you would, just give her a little ring to let her know that you're going to be there for their big celebration. It'll be right here in the Fellowship Hall. Um, but we look forward to celebrating with them. Another announcement is the rummage sale isn't too far off. So if you can start planning and bringing uh, things in shortly, not just yet. Um, and if you would be mindful not to bring them too late. Um, that just throws off the volunteers that are working so diligently to um, pull this off. And then last, let's just remember you guys, you got a mince breakfast next Saturday as well. It's in the um, cafe and the price is $6. So we hope you guys can all gather together for a good visit. But let's begin with our call to worship. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Now together, let's read. Oh, so what's that? Okay. Down, if stand if you're, stand. Mary. Let's remain standing as we pray together. Ever living God, we come with our heads bent down, sometimes overwhelmed with good new Friday news. Raise us up, lift up our eyes, so that we might look up and see the tendency of life in the midst of death. You may be seated. Hear assurance in what the psalmist proclaimed. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and God has given us light. Bind the festival procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for God is good, for God's steadfast love endures forever. In the name of Christ, new life comes. Christ is risen. Christ is risen 
Welcome to you all. Whether you have come as a visitor, come often or rarely, we're glad that we have joined together to receive the good news. And that is what we boldly proclaim, that in the midst of all that brings us down, we can look up in this moment and know that life and love wins. Three days had passed. <clears throat> the women went to the tomb to anoint Jesus' body, according to custom. No doubt the journey to the tomb was heavy. Perhaps they approached with heads lowered in defeat and grief. But they looked up and it changed their lives. The barrier that they thought would be there was gone. And what they discovered instead was life. Will we look up? Will we look up for from our complexity, apathy, fear, and depression about the way things are and be filled with the promise of new life and hope yet again? Will we be part of raising up of humanity? We can say yes to this, for Christ the Lord has risen today. Now, before we sing our first hymn, what we would like you to do is exit from the side aisles, come forward, get a flower, put the flower into the cross, and then return to your seat as we sing our hymn, Christ the Lord is Risen Today. It's, you'll find it in your red hymnal, 302 verses 1 through 4.
be seated. I'd like to invite Fred, our lay leader, Fred Delcamp, to come up. And Dave and Kathy, if you want to come up, please. We'll just have you stand front and center. I'm going to have you face, face. Oh, sorry, Dave and Kathy. <laughs> you can come too if you want. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Go ahead, friend. You're going to present. I now present our newest members, Dave and Kathy Burkett. You're presenting them for membership. For membership. <laughs> <laughs> they got to say, answer a few questions before they're official. Dave and Kathy, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Yes, I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people, to people of all ages, nations, and races? Dave and Kathy, through your baptism vows, you are incorporated by the Holy Spirit into God's new creation. Remember your baptism and be thankful. And may the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through the water and the Spirit, you may live as faithful disciples of Jesus Christ. So Dave and Kathy, as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? Yes. As members of this congregation at First United Methodist Church, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Yes. I do. Members of the household of God, I command Dave and Kathy to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. The God of all grace who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace. Okay. I ask to invite you to welcome your new members, Dave and Kathy.
We call upon you, O God, in the midst of the fullness of life, the joy and the sorrow. We pray that we can be up to something good for ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. We lift our thankful hearts and these acts of uplifting goodness. Let us rise up like incense before you, the lifting of my hands as the offering to you. Even today, O oh God, when we proclaim that there is always life in the midst of death, we have much to lament. Incline your ear and extend your love and healing power for these laments. Let us turn our focus to our prayer list. We pray for peace for Israel, Palestine, and Ukraine. For Terry, Betty, Cheryl, Sherry, Ed, Betty, Bernadine, Sherry, Rosie, Linda, Jody, Bob, Bill and Judy, Kay, Dolores, Craig, Robin, Rhonda, Janet, Blake, John, Ken, Dorothy, John, Scott, Todd, Ken and Pat, Cody, our military, and our homebound. As we continue in this time of prayer, I invite us into a moment of silence. And in this time of silence, if there is something on your heart or your mind or someone that you would like to lift up, we know that not everyone is on our prayer list, but in, the time of this, in this time of silence, you are welcome to speak those names. We may not all hear them, but God hears them, and it is in the power of our prayer that they are lifted up. Let us now go before him in the silence. Gracious God, you who love us so much that your son rose from the dead for us, giving us a, a eternal power and the promise of eternal life. We thank you, God, for the blessing of this holy day. It may be kind of dreary here in Owasso, Michigan, weather-wise, but we know that your light shines on us in this place and that joy is evident. Thank you. Thank you for the celebration of this Easter. Help us to make the celebration of Easter an everyday thing, for Jesus is alive and with us each and every day. So now we come before you, God, because there are concerns. Even on this most glorious day, there are concerns that are on our hearts and our minds. And you have heard all of those whose names have been lifted by voice. And you've heard those that have cried out in the silence from our hearts. Thank you for listening. Thank you for caring. Thank you for inclining your ear in a way that you hear us all, even if we don't hear everything. So as we come before you, we pray for those who we might know they're, they're the reason they need prayers, or we may not, but we lift them. And there are so many reasons that people need prayers. They may be homebound or in nursing care facilities or the hospital or recovering from surgery, maybe even anticipating surgery. There are those who are undergoing tests and treatments and are not physically able to be with us because of that. There are, are those who are struggling each and every day for the Easter message to become real to them because there is brokenness 
in their lives. So we lift them to you, O God, and we especially today pray for those who grieve, those who have lost a friend, a loved one, a family member. Oh, gracious God, today is a day to rejoice that even in the grief we can look up and see your glory shining on us. So those who grieve this day, draw them close, God, so they may feel the warmth of your embrace, but also the light of your love shining on them. We pray for our church and its ministry. We pray for all that you call us to do, oh God. Help us to incline our ear to you so that we may truly live out what you call us to do. We pray for our community, for its leaders, for our state and its leaders, for our nation and its leaders, for our world and its leaders. Oh God, help us to look up from all of the news that we hear that makes us downcast and sad and hurts to realize that you, you call us to work for goodness and peace and love. Help us, oh Lord, to do that. Help us to follow the paths that you lay before us so that we may help others find their way. That we may work with your hands and move with your feet and speak with your voice and love with your heart all that you place in our path so they may too find the celebration of Easter in their hearts. We lift our prayers to you this day, O oh God. In the holy name of the living Lord, the one who only days ago died on a cross, but yet this morning is alive. Thank you, God. So we lift our prayers in the name of the risen Jesus Christ and gather together as his beloved and favorite brothers and sisters, your beloved and favorite children, to pray the prayer that Jesus has taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now is the time that um, I get the opportunity to thank all of you for your giving to God through First United Methodist Church as we continue to carry out the work that God has called us to. So as Connie brings the offering plate forward, I'm going to invite you to stand as we sing this hymn of thanksgiving. Gracious God, we do give you thanks and praise for all of the gifts that you have showered upon us, especially the gift of Jesus. But now as we offer these gifts, a portion of our abundance back to you, we ask that you would bless them and send them out into your community so others may know the life-saving love that you offer us through Jesus Christ and will come to know an Easter every day. We ask this in the holy name of the risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Remain standing as we sing hymn 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voices.
You may be seated. Our scripture reading today is from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. The message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to appear, not for all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he, the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. And all the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Would you pray with me? Gracious and life-giving God, we give you thanks. We give you thanks for the opportunity to celebrate this glorious day. We give you thanks that you have given us so many opportunities to worship you, this time of worship being only one of them. And we give you thanks that in this time of worship, whether we are watching online or whether we are here in person, that you have allowed us to participate in the opportunities to sing to you and to pray to you and to hear your word read. And now as I have the opportunity to speak upon your word, I ask that my voice be silent and yours be loud, that the words that come from my mouth are truly your words and not mine. And as your word settles in our hearts, may your spirit stir within us so that we may respond to all that we experience this day. And may our response be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The woman had gotten up early in the morning. They'd gathered their oils and their spices. The Sabbath was finally over. And they could go and perform that last ritual for Jesus, anointing his body for his burial. And I'm sure that while they were walking to the tomb that morning, there was conversation about how big the stone was. They knew a stone had been rolled in front of the entrance. Then they knew how big it was. And they knew that probably even three or four of them could not roll that stone to the side to get in. So maybe they had hoped that there would be some men along the way that could help them. When they got to the tomb, they were shocked and surprised because the stone was already rolled away. The entrance was wide open. And so they went in, and Jesus wasn't in there. And there was a, a young man in a white robe who told them, you're probably looking for Jesus, but he's not here. He's been risen. You need to go and tell Peter and the rest of the disciples to meet him in the Galilee. The women, I'm sure, must have been not known what to do. Mark says they were terrified. They'd lost Jesus, or Jesus wasn't where he was supposed to be. They'd watched him die, pretty much. The women were there. The disciples had scattered they watched Jesus die on the cross. They knew where, he had, where his body had been laying. And yet when they arrived, it wasn't there anymore. And they were terrified. 
Mark does tell us that later they did go and they told Peter and the disciples. But fear, fear holds us back, doesn't it? Fear holds us back from so many things. Peter knew that even after he had gotten the word. If you read the resurrection story from the Gospel of John, when Mary Magdalene went and told John and, John and Peter that Jesus wasn't in the tomb, that, they'd, that she'd seen the risen Lord, Peter didn't really believe her. He ran to the tomb, he and John, and, and they found that Jesus wasn't there. John tells us they believed. We're not really sure what they believed. They believed Mary or they believed Jesus has, had risen because they immediately went and hid in the upper room. Fearful. Fear calls us to not always look up and look around. Fear sometimes leads us to strange places. And that's kind of where the women were and it's a lot of times where Peter was. Peter often used his mouth and stuck his foot in. But in the scripture today, Peter is proclaiming the resurrection. In the book of Acts, and, and I know it's not the most popular resurrection story that, that's read on Easter Sunday, but it's an important story. Because G Peter has finally gotten the message. Peter has finally seen the risen Lord. Peter now knows everything Jesus taught him is true. Peter is amazed and now he's out sharing the good news. In this passage from the book of Acts, Peter is speaking directly to people he never thought he would speak with because it really wasn't ever allowed to the Gentiles. And as he speaks to them, he finds that his long-held assumptions, the traditions of the Jewish faith, had gone. And they were now replaced by something new. The new thing that God is doing. And Peter is able to look up and share this new thing that God is doing. And the new thing is Jesus. That all things will be made new in heaven, a new heaven, a new earth, in which Jesus Christ will be Lord of all. He tells the Gentiles that Jesus' resurrection is for all people. His former, what he formerly believed, even though he was still Jewish, was kind of restricted in membership to the Jewish people. But now God is doing something new in everyday life and in every life. Easter is a promise of a new life. It's the first act of God's work making all things new. And that means everything is changing. And that means we all have to change because we have, to been, we have, been, too, we have been chosen to testify to others the good news of the resurrection. It's become part of our job now, our calling, to share this news that Jesus is alive. That Christ is risen, he is risen indeed. And sometimes we have to put our assumptions and traditions behind because God is always doing something new. God is the same yesterday, for today, and forever, but God is always bringing us something new life-changing things that bring us joy and peace. Peter preached that message to the Gentiles, to all who would listen, that Jesus Christ was alive, that resurrection had truly happened, and that message has continued on, and now each of us has that massive task of sharing, of continuing to do the good work that Jesus rose to share. And that certainly can instill fear in us. I know it did me when I was first called. There was like, uh uh. <laughs> no thank you, God. I love you, but no thanks. God wins, God makes all things new. We've been given that task. You don't have to become a pastor, you don't have to go to seminary to share the good news. 
You just have to believe and follow where God is calling you to go. And I know I've said this before. It's, we're called to, to preach the gospel wherever we go. And if necessary, said St. Francis, use words. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, my sinus has decided Easter weekend, the end of Holy Week and Easter weekend was the time it was going to erupt. But anyway, the message and the massive task of continuing to tell the good news is, is it kind of puts a little fear in us. How can we mortals, mere mortals, share this glorious news, this amazing news that that this Jesus, Jesus Christ, who rose from the dead, is alive and with us today. There's so many things going on in our world that make us downcast. Just turn the news on. What's happening in Gaza with the Palestinians and Israel and Ukraine, and for me, a broken heart over what's happening in Haiti. We become so downcast, and even here in Owasso, when I heard from each representative of the Shiawassee Homeless Coalition that the average age of a homeless person in Shiawassee County is nine years old. How can that be in a country with so much wealth? Where's the hope? How can we not be downcast? A bridge collapsed and we wonder what bridges are safe to drive over. Where is the hope? War and terrorist attacks, where is the hope? It seems like the same old, same old in the world and hope is dwindling. But hope is alive because Easter is about new life. Easter is about a dead Savior raising from the grave and walking out of the grave and, and appearing to his disciples. And even if we're paying attention, appearing to us. That's the, what Easter, that's the power of Easter, is that Christ is alive and with us now and bringing us new life and working to transform our hearts each and every day. So as we celebrate this act of God making all things new, we need to ask ourselves how the Spirit may be moving amongst us in unexpected ways, even challenging ways. And how the reverberations of that first resurrection, that Easter resurrection of Jesus, continues to manifest around us each and every day. To do that, we can't have our eyes looking downward. We can't be downcast. We have to, put, we have to look up. We have to allow our spirits to look up. To see the good around us. And to work for that good for each and every human being. We need to look up and expect that God is working in and through and around us. During Lent, um, I was sharing with the book Up with Noah's Ark. It was just a little golden book. It wasn't a big, thick book. The book Up, if you've seen the movie, you probably know what it's about. And, um, but I was sharing it with the Noah's Ark Chapel time and with the kids. And if you don't know the story, it's about Carl. And Carl's beloved wife, Ellie, has died. And he misses her. And the area around the house that they shared all of their life was being claimed for more modern buildings and high-rise apartments. And he wasn't going to sell his house, but he, he knew that he probably was going to have to. So he doesn't want to give it up and, and because of his memories with his beloved wife. He and Ellie had a dream to go and see Paradise Falls in South America. And Ellie had kept an adventure book where he opened it up and um, thought, well, he's going to have an adventure. If they couldn't do it himself, he was, if he couldn't do it with Ellie, he was going to do it by himself. So... You know, he did, of course, the natural thing that people would do when they want to change their world. He attached all these balloons to his house, and it floated away. And he thought everything was going to be wonderful until there was a knock on his door where a very frightened Russell, wilderness explorer Russell, was standing as they were floating through the air. Carl was downcast. He hadn't expected this interruption. 
And they went through a, a thunderstorm and the house crashed on the ground and they could see Paradise Falls in the distance, but they weren't there yet. So Carl decided that he and Russell were going to walk the rest of the way, but he didn't want to give up his house. So he took the garden hose and the balloons were still attached and he pulled the, the house with the balloons and the garden hose. And along the way, they saw these big bird tracks. And then they met the bird, whom they named Kevin. Kevin was a huge bird, and Russell was even more upset because now his, his dream trip was being interrupted by a wilderness explorer and a bird. And then along came Doug. Doug the talking dog. Carl, Carl's plans were being dashed. What more? Doug the talking dog, Kevin the bird, who come to find out was, shouldn't have been named Kevin at all because Kevin was a mom and was trying to get back to her babies. So Carl is, is really downcast and he, he doesn't know how he got in this situation. And then there, there was Mr. Muntz who was trying to capture Kevin and wanted her babies, and wanted to hold them for himself because she was a rare bird. And these two ferocious dogs came up, and they, after them, and, and Kevin and, or Carl and Russell hide Kevin from the dogs. Well, Mr. Muntz finds out, and he sets fire to Carl's house, and Carl gives up Kevin, even though he knew he shouldn't have. Surely this wasn't what he was planning for his trip. What a horrible ending. All he wanted was to be alone with his memories. Now his house was on fire. He has a junior wilderness explorer and a talking dog. He was down. He takes out Ellie's adventure book once again, and there's a page that says, Stuff I'm Going to Do. He didn't think there was anything past that page that said, Stuff I'm Going to Do. But he turned the page. He thought maybe there was nothing more because Ellie's grand adventure hadn't happened. But he turned the book open, he turned the pages, and he looked and saw there was more there. There were photos in the album of their entire life together. Even though it was ordinary, she, was, she said their ordinary life was an adventure. At the end of the picture, she, pictures, she writes, Thanks for the adventure. Now go have a new one. It is then that new life comes to Carl. He rescues Kevin and her babies, and together with Doug and Russell, he has found a new life. He's found new joy. He's found transformation. And isn't that what Easter is for us? Isn't that what the resurrection brings to us? Isn't that what it was all about? Jesus sends the disciples out on a new adventure, and he calls us to that adventure again. Look up. It's a new day. It's a new way of living. For Christ has risen. He has risen indeed. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we do give you thanks for all of the gifts that you have showered upon us. Thank you, God, for the joy that Easter brings us, for the resurrection power that is in our lives. Thank you for the call to share that message. You have already given us everything we need to share it. Help us to find it. Help us to always be looking up as we share our message, maybe not with our words, but in the way we live our lives. Guide us, O oh God, to be your Easter people and to offer new life to all we meet. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You'll find our closing hymn on 310. He lives, and please stand if you're able.
so now go into the world remembering that where at, whenever you feel down, you can look up. Look up and notice the life that, that can't help itself. It continues to renewal all around you. In spite of what you are feeling at any one time in your life, know that you are loved, that your life matters. That your life can be uplifted and you can uplift those around you. And when someone asks you, what are you up to, you can respond. With God's help, I'm up to something good. Let the people say amen.